so potent, go straight to the brain. Stress out hurting, good for the pain. Pick it through a menu, so many strains. No matter what you're into, shit's insane. Swift in the building, smoke to the ceiling. Feeling incredible. Hey, what's up everyone? Back with another video. Today I'm going to show you how to get started with illegal cannabis grow in Canada. We've been legal for the last year, but every province has its own rules, and some decided not to allow growing at all, so make sure you check your provincial government website before starting up. For the most of us, federal law allows four recreational plants per household, and you have to buy your seeds from a government-approved store. Ever since cannabis became legal in Canada and most of the states, Amazon has been a great place to find everything you need. You can also get some of the smaller things at a dollar store or Canadian Tire, so don't waste money on a package deal from third-party sellers. There's also new brands and products coming out, giving us a larger selection and better prices. Here's a list of everything you'll need to get started. Amazon links are in the description below. Grow tent, lights, timer, carbon filter, fans, nutrients and pH conditioners, temperature humidity monitors, pots or hydroponic systems, soil and mediums, pH tester, an air conditioner, heater or humidifier depending on room conditions. Can get some of the smaller things as you're getting set up like snips, grog net or tomato steaks, potting trays, and dollar store LED flashlights in case of a power outage. Trust me, they've helped keep the girls on schedule through a few storms. Once you have a list of supplies, it can get a bit overwhelming and confusing on what products to choose. I'll try to break down the main supplies with a brief description and hopefully it can help with your decision. Grow tents are great for growing the legal four without building up a whole room. I suggest at least a 4x4 to fit four plants comfortably. The only issue I see with them online is light leaks through bad stitching or the Velcro viewing windows. Don't worry about this at all. Your tent should be kept in a dark room, especially when keeping the air vents open. Rather be safe than sorry, I split up a room using curtains blocking any direct light. Also make sure you read through all the comments and reviews and make sure it's sturdy enough to hang all your equipment. My 4x4 Vivo Sun has worked out great. For the lights I'm personally still experimenting with full spectrum LEDs and soon to try Cobb LEDs. They don't use as much hydro and have built in fans. Although with a million different lights in the market, it's hard to tell which is best. High pressure sodium, known as HPS, has been growers' first choice for years, but watch how you set up in a small tent with the heat they generate. If you go HPS, make sure you research proper ventilation. Would definitely need a 6 inch carbon filter instead of a 4, or use a 400 to 600 watt bulb instead of a 1000. Your carbon filter will get rid of smell, help humidity and temperature control while bringing in fresh air and getting rid of the old. A 4 inch carbon filter with speed control would be good for a 4x4 or 5x5 tent using LEDs or cob lights. If you're in an airtight room, make sure you're bringing in fresh air using an exhaust fan or blow cool air directly in the tent from an air conditioner. It's good to have fans in the tent to move the air around too. I use a Vivo Sun clip fan and another fan on the floor to keep the air moving around the pots. Fiber pots are the new best thing with better root aeration and drainage while watering. Some people even use Walmart and dollar store reusable bags. I've tried the 10 gallon and a 4x4 but found the 7 or 5 gallons fit more comfortable. Hydroponics is a cool way of growing with many benefits. Can grow on a table and flood feed on a timer or in a 5 gallon bucket using the deep water culture technique. It's easy to correct pH levels by changing the water in the reservoir at any time and makes it easier to flush and transition or harvest. If you plan to go hydroponics, research other growers setups first that may be cheaper to build your own. When it comes to soil and mixes, there's a lot of options. Can mix your own or buy expensive mixes like kryptonite. But to make things simple the first time around, I just use a regular topsoil found at garden centers in Canadian Tire. It's popular with many large-scale growers and has a lot of benefits. Nutrients and pH levels play a big part on the health of your plants as well. I've been using a three-part pH perfect from Advanced Nutrients fed through Veg and Bloom. It's still good to check your pH levels though. Finding the right amount to feed and the right schedule is a bit tricky when the pH levels in the soil change. When using other nutrients, you'll need pH up and down conditioners. It's good to use them after the nutrients so you're not adding a second time. Using too much pH up or down isn't healthy. Main thing is always research what you're using and others experience using it. Other nutrients to look at would be Bud Candy, Big Bud, Overdrive, Flawless Flush, and CalMag, although CalMag is not needed with three-part advanced nutrients. General Hydroponics sells a similar nutrients as well. It's all about choosing your main equipment and adding things as you go along. First time growers should always research every stage of growth and keep a log of how you did things and how it worked out for you. There's also a few Facebook groups that are very helpful anytime you're in a jam. Just make a post and there's lots of growers there to help. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope I could help you get started with some of the basics. Please like, comment, and subscribe and we'll be back with more videos soon. Happy token everyone.